Hello guys, uh, welcome to class number 4 of this budget series 2024-25. Uh, so I have been explaining what are the components of the budget. In class 3 I have explained what are the income sources for the government, what are the expenses sources, what are the expenses for the government. Now what UPSC will ask is, they will ask what is the total budget, arrange the revenue components of the budget, revenue incomes and capital incomes in ascending order or descending order along with the expenses in ascending order or descending order. The thing that you are seeing in this flowchart is the summary of this entire budget. So the budget 2024-25 is this. This is the summary guys. The question is what we have here. We know the components of budget, income component and expenses. Government of India has said that the total expenses this year it is going to be 47.65 lakh crores. Out of this the revenue expenses are 36.54 lakh crores and the capital expenses are 11.11 .11 lakh crores. So just remember 36.5 lakh crores is the revenue expenditure, capital expenditure is 11.11 .11 lakh crores. Now, so this is the expenses that government of India is expecting for this financial year. So government of India is expecting this amount of expenses. How much? 47.65 lakh crores. They will ask what is the revenue component and capital component. Revenue component is 36.54 lakh crores and capital component is 11.11 .11 lakh crores. Now in the revenue component if you look what is the total or highest share of revenue expenditure. Highest share of revenue expenditure is going for interest payments that is the interest that we have taken. Maximum amount of is going here and transport charges of the government, defense expenses which are uh, revenue expenses again subsidy. So these are the four in the descending order you have to remember. Highest is for interest payments, transports, defense and subsidies. In the subsidy again if you look at the order fertilizer subsidy is highest followed by fuel subsidy and food subsidy and fuel subsidy. So this is one question that they will ask revenue expenses. On the capital side what they will ask is total amount of capital expenditure that government of India is going to have is 11.11 .11 lakh crore. In this, how far Narendra Modi government is spending on capital expenditure? That you have to know. They will ask the trends in capital expenditure. In order to know the trends in capital expenditure, you should clearly remember this one. So if you look from 2016-17 how government of India is expending the capital. So capital expenditure is 2.8% of GDP, 2 2.6, 3.1, 3.4, 4.1, 5.9, 7.4, 9.5 and 11.1. Which means from the year financial year 2018 if you look capital expenditure is consistently increasing. This is important. Consistently increasing. Now this is the yellow one that you are finding is grants given for the states for creation of capital assets. Now if you look from 2021 again or 2019 or 20 it is again constantly, constantly increasing. So effective capital expenditure has been consistently increasing from 2018. This is one question that they will ask. This clearly shows that uh, what Nimala Sitaraman said is Government of India is expending more on the capital expenditure so that it will act or it will act as a boost for economic development. So they wanted to build this economy on economic infrastructure. This is the first thing that you have to understand. So if you look at the expenses 47.65 lakh crores is the expenses. In that revenue expenses 36 lakh crores, capital expenses 11 lakh crores. If you look at the capital trend government of India. Uh, since 2014 or 2016 capital expenditure is consistently increasing that is one trend that you have to observe that is very important here. So we have total expense of 47.65 lakh crores so you should have revenue income for that. What are the income sources that government said for this 47.65 lakh crores? Government said we are going to have income from revenue receipts as well as income from capital receipts. In the revenue receipt side, they said that <coughs> we are going to have 30 lakh crores. We are going to have 30 lakh crores
So we have total expenses of 47.65 lakh crores. Now you have to build that 47.65 lakh crores. So you are building with the revenue receipts, you have 30 lakh crores and with the capital receipts of 17 lakh crores, you are going to build this. So total revenue income is greater than capital income of the government. If you look at that, tax revenue is there, non-tax revenue is there. In the taxes also, if you look, IT, income tax is highest tax that government is getting, followed by GST, followed by corporation tax, followed by excise tax. They will ask, arrange the following taxes in the descending of order of their contribution to the India's tax revenues. IT is highest, followed by GST, followed by corporation tax, followed by excise tax. So this is the thing that you have in the taxes side. So capital loans, it is 16.8 lakhs. So in the capital side, highest amount is through borrowings. If you take the total income of the government, total income of the government, it is the borrowings or the loans which is stopping, followed by IT, GST, corporation tax, and the tax tax. What do I mean by this? If you look at the total money that is coming into the government, it is dominated by loans. If you take both segments, capital and revenue. If you take only revenue segment in the income tax side, IT, GST, corporation tax and excise tax. So this is one thing that you have to remember. So what I said, you have to remember this, you have to remember the trend, you have to remember what is the total sources of revenue and what is the descending order of the taxes. Now we have two types of taxes, direct taxes and indirect taxes. The next question is, sir, which tax is more for the government, right? Whether this is direct taxes or indirect taxes. So if you look, it is direct taxes which is more for the government than indirect taxes. So direct taxes are more than indirect taxes. Direct taxes are more than indirect taxes. Contribution through direct taxes is 6.8% whereas indirect taxes it is 5.8% of GDP. So this is one thing that you have to understand. From this we will calculate tax to GDP. The tax to GDP of the country is 11.7%. Now what is this tax to GDP? Tax to GDP is nothing but uh, in relation to your size of economy, how much amount of revenue is being collected by the government in the form of taxes and uh, other uh, things. So to your GDP, how much amount of taxes are generating from your GDP that is called to tax to GDP. Now when tax to GDP will be very good, when the economy is growing, when the economy is growing, definitely there will be more taxes from the, for the government as a result tax to GDP increasing means economy is increasing. However, what happens if there is poor tax to GDP? Obviously there will be impact on the poor people that government of India has to borrow heavily. So out of entire GDP, how much amount of revenue receipts is received in the form of taxes in relation to your GDP that is called tax to GDP. So that is the next thing that you have to understand. And again, they will ask one trend here. You have to remember the trends in tax to GDP. So tax to GDP is 11.7% of GDP this year. In this direct taxes are heavier compared to indirect taxes. This is what you will find here. And look at the trend. Trends are somewhere around 10%, 10.6, 11.1, 11.2, 11, 11, 10, 11.2, 11.5, 11.2, 11.1, 11.6, 11.7. So there is no consistent trend as such. But one consistent trend that I observed from 2022 is direct taxes are dominating more than the indirect taxes. This is one trend that you have to observe. So this we can ask another question. So what I am saying is, what is the total expenditure of the government in order to meet this expenditure? What is the total income sources for the government? In the income you have revenue income, capital income. In the revenue income you have tax income and non-tax uh, uh, capital income. You have taxes or non-taxes. In the taxes, highest tax is contributed by income tax, followed by GST, followed by corporation tax, followed by some excise tax which is not uh, embedded into GST. Now, on the capital segment, capital, reven capital revenues of the government, if you look, you have loans. If you take the entire thing, loans are higher compared to your uh, IT, compared to GST, compared to corporation tax. Now, what is higher, whether direct taxes or indirect taxes? Today, direct taxes is more than indirect taxes. Direct taxes are somewhere around 6.7% of GDP. Indirect taxes are 5.5% of GDP. So if you take tax to GDP, it is 11.7% of GDP. And what is the trend? There is no consistent trend. However, after 2021, what you observe is direct taxes are dominating the indirect taxes. This is another thing that you have to understand as far as this is concerned. So they will ask for this question. The third thing is, now we have expenses of 47.65 lakh crores. We have revenue source 
30 lakh crores and we have other sources of income somewhere around 7, 37. Now how to meet the others? So the others are met through loans. So government of India is borrowing 16.8 lakh crores as loans this year. Right? So what does this mean? This is the budget or this is the fiscal deficit of the country. So the fiscal deficit is 16.8 lakh crores because the fiscal deficit is nothing but total borrowings to make budget neutral. Right? That is the thing. So if you calculate that in terms of percentages of GDP, fiscal deficit this year it is going to be 5.1% of GDP. Similarly, if you calculate the revenue deficit, it is going to be 2%, primary deficit 1.5%, effective revenue deficit 0.8%. So fiscal deficit 5.1%, you have to remember this, revenue deficit 2.0%, primary deficit 1.5%, effective revenue deficit 0.8%. So if you ask, if you are asked to keep them in descending order, FRD is highest followed by RD, followed by PD, followed by ERD. This is another thing that we have to understand. Again, they can ask friends in deficits. Friends in deficits. Have a look at this. So if you look at the last year budget, 2024, Government of India said that we are going to have 5.9% of GDP in the last budget. However, as per the revised estimates, it has come to 5.8%, which means Government of India has it decrease their fiscal deficit than they have committed in the budget right so this is something a good good sign how government of india was able to decrease this by 0.1 percent obviously because of the beyond tax revenues and government of india has also slashed capital expenditure last year as a result we are able to contain our fiscal deficit to 5.8 percent than what we have promised in the budget last year at 5.9 percent so this year if you look at the trends it is 5.1% fiscal deficit, revenue deficit 2.0, primary deficit 1.5, effective revenue deficit 0.5. And if you look at the trends, you know, 2022 say, from 2022, trend is consistently decreasing. So all these are consistently decreasing after COVID. So this is one thing that you have to understand. So deficits of the country are consistently decreasing after 2022. They will ask this. Before that, there is some zigzag position, right? Look at 2014. In from 2014 to until 2019, before COVID-19, we have successfully contained our uh, uh, deficits and we are coming back. So what is the abnormality that we observe here? The abnormality is during this COVID years. So they have increased and this has created the problem. So from 2014 to 2019, there has been consistent decline in the deficits. After that, so 2014 to 2019, there was consistent decline. After that, from 2022 to 2025, there has been consistent decline. So in the years 2021, we don't find this consistency. This is a thing that we have to observe. Rather, you can say that from 2021 itself, it has been decreasing. From 2021 itself, it has been decreasing. It is only during COVID year that we were very uh, hit very high. So this will be prelims question. In prelims, I will ask this. What is the trends in tax to GDP? What is the trends in deficits? What is the trends in capital expenditure of the government? So go to the capital expenditure and let's have a look at what is the trends in capital expenditure. Right, I said, capital expenditure has been consistently increasing. Look at this position. We have been consistently increasing the capital expenditure. So this is an indication that government wants to boost this economy by building up the infrastructure that is really required for the government. And this budget breakdown that you are finding is, this is the revenue uh, expenses. The major revenue expenses going for interest payments, followed by transport, followed by defense. These are the three things that I have said, followed by the so-called uh, the subsidies, right? So budget at a glance is nothing but this. They have given in detail. This is the summary. No need to go through this. This is the summary what I have said. So what is the summary? If you look at this, you have to remember these things. First one is, what is the total budget expense? The total budget expense is 47.65 lakh crores. Next thing is, income should be equal to expenses. That is the thing. So, budget deficit will be zero. 
Now expenses in this revenue expense is 36 lakh crores. You have to remember this capital expense is 11.11 lakh crores. So if you remember 47.65 11.11 that is okay because from there you can derive revenue. In order to meet these expenses you have revenue income of 30.7 lakh crores in which the descending order is this and capital expenditure of 17.65 lakh crores. So total again if you arrange them in the descending order this is the one and direct taxes are related than indirect taxes to the government and tax to GDP is 11.7 percent. So here there occurs one trend. What is that trend? Tax to GDP, how it is varying. There is no consistency in tax to GDP. However, one thing that you find is indirect direct taxes of the government are more than indirect taxes. In the capital expenditure, there is second trend. This they will ask how the trends have been. So you have to observe capital expenditure has been consistently increasing during the Prime Minister Modi's time. Now, third trend that you observe is the deficits. So what I said, I just shown some graphs and I have showed how it is varying. Now the final conclusion is what finance minister has spoke about our growth rate this year. Finance minister is expecting a nominal growth. India is going to grow at a nominal growth of 10.5% this financial year. Now in terms of absolute numbers, this is going to be 296 lakh crores. So the GDP of the country for this financial year is 296 lakh crores in nominal terms. If you adjust with it with the inflation, it will be real. However, real GDP was not mentioned. So 10.5% is going to be the growth rate of the country. That is what finance minister has said. And these are the major substantial standards or substantial statistics from this budget. So you can download this. Uh, I will upload this in the Telegram channel. You have a look at it. So where this is the receipt, so this is the summary guys, the entire summary of budget is this page, budget 2024 that I have prepared. So budget at a glance, I have arranged them there, rupee comes from rupee goes to trends in net tax receipts, how government of India is receiving taxes. So tax revenue is highest, non-tax revenue is second, non-debt capital receipts is this. So after this, whatever the shortage it is there, that comes as fiscal deficit and that is government is borrowing. So government borrowing comes here. Next one is trends in tax to GDP. Now tax to GDP is very important because it is going to indicate uh, the size of the economy and it is going to indicate how far your revenues are occurring from that size of the economy. There was one previous year question here. A decrease in tax to GDP ratio of a country indicates what? Slowing economic growth rate, less equitable distribution of national income. Obviously tax to GDP is declining means what is it indicating? The growth rate is very poor. If the growth rate is very high, people will be paying taxes. So this is a clear indication. Less equitable distribution of national income is not an indication for tax to GDP ratio. Even if the tax amount is less, government can distribute more. So this is not the consequence, right? The decrease in tax to GDP of a country will not indicate less or more equitable distribution. That is government policy. Government, if it wants to spend more, they can spend more irrespective of the tax size. So only A is correct. The next one is budget breakdown. No need to go through it. Trends, this is very important. Now, if you look at the major expenses, what government of India is keeping? After interest payments, you have transport, rural development this year. So transport, interest payments, transport, rural development, agriculture, education, health, energy and social welfare. So these are the areas where, so the yellow one is the CS budget. So where we are spending more? We are spending more on interest payments followed by transport, followed by rural development, agriculture, education, health, energy, social welfare. So this is the descending order of expenses of government. This is one thing that you have to remember very easy. So transport, go to villages, you will find rural development, inside rural areas, agriculture will be there, children's education will be there, health will be there, right? And again, go for energy building up in this area, so social welfare. These are the things you can remember. Now, every year government transport to the states some funds. What are the funds? Finance Commission grants, devolution, Finance Commission devolution and other schemes. That is central sector scheme money, central sponsored schemes money. So tax devolution is highest. So how central government is giving to state government? This is the thing. It is given in the form of tax devolutions. It is giving in the form of tax devolutions is highest followed by finance commission sorry followed by central sponsored schemes followed by finance commission grants this is the way in which the central government is distributing to the states and union territories some money 
that is what you have to remember so if you look at how central government is giving to the states again from 2020 there has been consistent increase that central government is transferring because many state governments are saying that uh, prime minister narendra modi is not acting in favor of the states but this is something different right what the data shows is government is definitely increasing the share so that is one thing and i already said this deficit prints until 2019 financial year consistent decline after 2021 there has been consistent decline but during 2000 20 and 21 there has been rise in the fiscal deficits so this is only exception 2009 20 but and 20 20. after that we have consistent decline now whenever there is deficit right we have this amount of deficit where we are financing so we are financing highest from the market so this we can ask highest is from market borrowings followed by the blue one short securities against small savings followed by short term deposits like t bills and then others so we are borrowing more by issuing government securities and by the way this is long term securities or long term borrowing so followed by small time borrowing that is the one that you find so this is about the entire budget as far as uh, the so called as far as the so called uh, estimates of the budget is considered now in my next class what I am going to make is I am going to make what are the schemes that Prime Minister uh, or Nirmala Sitaraman has spoke or what are the major changes that this budget has got? There is no major changes except the reiteration of government position that government of India has achieved success in the last 10 years. So more or less it was a congratulatory, self-congratulatory document this year budget. So government of India is focusing on because of the Bharat Sankal, right, 2047 in this context. We will see what finance minister has prized this government and how they are expecting to come back and what are the big things that they wanted to do in their third uh, term once they are coming back. So these are the things that we have left. But as far as UPSC or State Public Service Commissions are considered, you should know what is entry budget and what is voter account and you should definitely know these things that I have said so far. What is this? At least you remember this one, the front page. This is the only thing that you have to remember. That is the chart that I have prepared. Right guys? So in my next thing, I will focus on how Finance Minister has uh, given her speech and what are the major things that government has done so that is going to be the last part of this uh, budget series and i will go to economic survey quickly in another video so two more videos are going to come today thanks for joining guys have a great day